Hey everybody, it's Anthony and Tucker here. We're here to bring you your lender update for the month of August on the Boulder County market. And as usual, we've got some exciting stuff to share. Um, you know, one thing that we're noticing is it feels a lot like last month. We're still seeing a lot of similar trends from July into August, and even anecdotally, that's feeling about the same coming into this month. We're just not feeling any major changes one way or the other. Which is good and bad, right, Anthony? It's, it's absolutely I mean, bad. Sometimes it's good. <laughs> sales price is the same. Under contracts are relatively the same. Inventory slightly dropped a little bit, um, but really, I mean, it's kind of par for the course right now in Q3. And I think September is going to be a lot like that as well, from what we can really tell. Mm -hmm. So take a look at this. Your submarkets are obviously not the same. Anecdotally, the 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 greater market is pretty similar. But when you get kind of into some of these smaller markets. Let's talk about like Louisville, for example, yeah. right? Louisville, supply. 12%, you know, supply less than this time last year, but a little bit more supply finally because they've been so low. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you're talking about these markets with super drops in, in inventory, you know, well, look at this, well, 29 homes, right? Like it's just a tough market. And that's detached and attached. That's not a lot of options. Whereas when we look in places more like Longmont, which has Boulder, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, talk, let's talk Longmont for a second. They have more overall inventory than Boulder does, but they have less listings. So as you guys know, being front lines of the borrowing side, money is still playing a huge factor and it's going to continue to do so. Well, I think it's playing a bigger factor in markets like Longmont because it's a more affordable product. You attract more of that type of buyer where the more wealthy affluent investors or people that would want to live in a Boulder, they may decide not to list a home. They may decide not to sell a home. They may just sit put or they just throw a lot of cash in the deal because we're seeing a lot of cash deals, right? Mm -hmm. So we have been seeing very a different. lot of cash deals, which I know is hard on y'all. But yeah. we have a third of the deals right now have been cash here in yeah. our Boulder office. Very different from what Metro is experiencing, right? They're talking 25%. We're talking 33%. And that really just shows our affluence here in the Boulder County markets, yeah. as so we can well. see. Yeah, it's just that raw affluence. But we are seeing a little bit of a drop, like we said, in the inventory. Now, let's compare that to buyer demand. What's going on to under contracts versus inventory in the market? Well, 2.8 months of inventory is still technically a seller's market, right? It probably is starting to feel a little bit more like a balanced market from what we're seeing for as well, but it is not the same in every market. That's what it feels like in Boulder, 3.3 months of inventory. You go over to Louisville, 1.4 months of inventory. I hear people with bidding wars all the time. So... It really depends the market to submarket, even neighborhood to neighborhood in many cases. Um, you're basically seeing the Louisville, Lafayette, Superior, Erie's of the world, like out in the county, Longmont in many cases, where inventory in some markets are still really constrained. Yeah, because it's not the the luxury. And as, as you've been seeing with your you know, folks, either looking at homes or going under contracts or putting in offers, a lot of the inventory isn't fantastic inventory buttoned up ready to move in. And that's where we're seeing, once again, that's the stuff that's not looking good. You're moving in. You can throw a house ring party in two to three weeks. <laughs> that inventory is moving. The stuff that you're doing two years worth of renovations and it's a sweat equity project, those projects or those, those homes just aren't moving as fast because people are having to spend so much more money to get in. You guys, you see they're all their financials. People don't have the extra cash to then do the renovations. So that's just one thing we recommend to your clients is, Hey, if they are the type that are willing to do that, they can get great value right now in the purchase market if they're willing to take the two, three, four years that it'll take to renovate and do a lot of work themselves. This is the window they can get in. So while, yeah, it's tough, rates suck, you know, blah, 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 all the negatives, there's still windows of opportunity for the right folks who can do this. I think there's a lot of opportunity in this market. I mean, if you're a buyer in this marketplace, you could really capitalize on getting into some cool yeah. places with not a lot of competition. Um, the sellers, on the other hand, you know, they can absolutely get it sold. And honestly, the speed of the market's fast. You may not be getting the price you got a couple of years ago, but realistically, if it only takes 30 days to sell a home, these are way better numbers than we saw even in 2019. So and this is where you can remind your folks, hey, back in 2019, or even, you know, if you look at the beginning of the graph here in Q1 of 2021, sure. we even were moving, that was a good market, right? We all remember that. That was really good. Things were coming in right at asking. Everything was appraising. We were happy. We're talking about doing this at seven and a quarter interest rates. Like the fact that there's still that much buyer demand out there in relationship to what we have active. Yes. I mean, we're basically showing that this is a very resilient area, and that's, I think, an important message to bring to those home buyers. Don't forget to stop. We're still, still seeing a lot of 2-1 buy downs, and we're seeing that, especially in the higher end of the market, 
that's what's getting some of these deals to pencil. That's what's getting some of these buyers able to really take that leap of, you know, take that leap and buy this home is those two one buy downs. So don't be afraid to remind your agents and remind your buyers, hey, get some concessions from these sellers. We're seeing lots of concessions. 40% at land title last month of deals. And and some sort of concessions. Market share that we can extrapolate. We, we feel confident in extrapolating that to the whole market. Okay. You know, with our market share, that's, we feel really good. We're, good, that. we're a good representation of the market at this point, for sure. And so that's where we just go, oh my gosh, use these, benefit, help get these folks going, right? These are great tools in your toolbox. Um, you know, you guys spent so much time working on them for so long. Keep using them, dust them off. Absolutely. All right, so let's look a little bit at the price point. Um, Tucker's big head is in the way of our souls, but honestly, uh, look at those year to date numbers. The, the head's not that big, it's just the forehead. <laughs> it's five head. Okay, so <laughs> number one, let's start at the top two to three million really finally slowing down, right? Yeah. We saw a lot of cash being parked in Boulder County, and we're still seeing it. And honestly, there's still buyers out there, but nothing at two and a half to three million that's a tough pill to swallow because you know, I mean, a lot of those guys are still taking out loans the previous months or whatever, but yeah. Slowing down, right? Inventory starting to pile up. Only six sales at three plus million. They're mostly cash, but like people are still taking those out there too. Up until a couple months ago, the luxury market didn't seem that super luxury market didn't feel that impacted. Now it is. Fine. This is the first month. Really, mm -hmm. really started catching up here in August. This is really, really where we're kind of seeing it take effect based on the data coming forward. And what you can really see is we look down the absorption rate. Every price band you go down, it, the absorption rate increases. So we can, I mean, just once again, cost, cost, cost. We know it's a cost of money and it's the loans. And even with those cash deals out there, it's just, we don't see as much of it. You know, it's just overall taken down, which, you know, we expected going into the environment we're in, but that's where it's just remind your folks, the lower the price point and the more bundled up the home is, the harder it's going to be to get it get more creative, see if you can get some concessions from the seller. We have been seeing a bit of, hey, let's make the sales price 10,000 over. Let's do a 15K concession. Yeah, absolutely. We're so we're seeing a lot of ad askings with concessions. I mean, we can get there at some point. Let's continue on by price point. Let's have that conversation a little bit. Yeah. Um, okay, the one thing that I wanted to point out here with our days on market and loan supply of inventory is the market as a whole at all price ranges are is moving fairly quickly still you can see even at three plus million 48 days one to one and a half million 30 days right the market's moving quick so the buyers out there are very serious which you guys are probably feeling that the big difference is where are they competing on this ladder right because the lower down the ladder they are the more competition they are and it seems like we're really feeling that you get up into that above one and a half million, we're talking balanced okay. markets, buyer's markets. I mean, huge changes up in the three plus million market. I've been doing some analytics on that recently. And it's pretty interesting to see stuff that's buttoned up and ready to go, maybe one to six days on market in some mm -hmm. cases. And then there's everything else. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty extreme, right? Yeah. There's some big, some big shifts there. That's once again, you know, as you're working with your clients, you know, as a, you know, whatever their pre-approval letters are for, you know, hey, the shop in Longmont in that four to five range, what other, what else can you do to help your client win those deals and you can help secure that financing for them on the purchase? You know, how else can you help your client? Especially under 800,000. Especially, and I mean, depending on the area, if it's Longmont and under six, it's a competitive market for the most part, unless it's a ton of sweat equity. And I think you're going to see that all the way through about uh, halloween -ish. Right? It's always a good time in the market where you're going to see a lot of these first time home buyers are out right now. They don't really have a perspective. So, like, if you're looking to find new buyers, target those first time home buyers or people moving to the state because they truly don't know the difference, right? They might have been paying $3,000 a month in rent. So, what's $3,000 in a mortgage, right? Yeah. It may not be like kind, but like at this point, they have no other perspective. Well, and I also come from the different perspective because this is how I kind of got my first spot was. You know, hey, this is the time to get in the market. This is the window. You go, oh, we should have bought in the 90s. Oh, we should have bought right after the crash. This, we're getting into the window for those first time home buyers and people who, you know, have the time, have the bandwidth to put in that sweat equity and really improve the properties either themselves or manage their own projects. This is their window. And so everyone, you know, whenever there is the window, no one feels like that's the window because it's panic, panic, panic. It's the people who have the ball to do it during that window and take the chance who are the ones who are rewarded the most. 
and this is right now that time. So, you know, this is what you want to share with your clients is if they're those folks, those types of people, now's the window. You can actually buy under under offers. And remind your I mean, I'm always right. There's only a couple on the market, right? And remind, just because it's listed for a number, especially those first-time home buyers, doesn't mean that's what they have to offer. It's a starting point of a negotiation is right in that con contract. I mean, I it's hear that over offer. and over and over. And you actually see it in a lot of them. Like, if people aren't willing to pay close to asking price, they're not even making offers. I guarantee there are deals out there to be had if you will just make an offer. With There's, if so the house literally. is on the market and this, if, that, if the <laughs> seller's going to the house on the market, they need to sell right now. That's right, exactly. They need to sell. Capitalize on it. Yeah, of course, they're not going to make the extra 10% they want, but they need to sell, help them sell, right? Sure. Offer. I mean, how many times do we hear it from sellers going, we, we would take anything. We just want to get it off the damn market. We need to sell this house. So, okay. so average sold price, um, big changes across the market in the short term, but very small changes over the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of positivity around this slide right now. Trailing 12 month the data shows fairly flat. Yes. That is a great sign. Going into Q3, these numbers are going to continue to improve. Into Q4, they're going to continue to improve. This is a good sign where we're finally hitting this balance point in the market where a year ago the sky was falling and people didn't know what to think and yada 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 and here we are like pop back up to where you know, we're we're seen before, right? yeah. which is for, for, the, for the market as a whole now of course there's still there's still there's still things out there that you know people overpaid on there's no question about that but as a whole and we're using averages we're using the whole market as a whole we pop back up so i think that's really important to distinguish that that as a whole we're back up Yep. There is, of course, always those outliers of just offers people shouldn't have put out there. Yeah. Or they did because they had such cheap money and they knew their monthly payment was lower down than it would be. It's a lot lower even at the peak of the market last year than it is today. So that yeah. being said, <laughs> <laughs> so there's the, you know, there's a little bit of bouncing there. So the big thing here is to kind of take my while with a grain of salt. You see it down in the percent there. The inventory is too small. Too small the market, but everywhere else is really kind of starting to hit that balance point. Yeah. So just wanted to point that out because I think that's a really important one. This slide is our sold units of inventory from compared to last year. You can see obviously we had no no way to keep up with the first half of the year. But getting into Q3 and Q4, we're really starting to see that stability in the seasonality mm -hmm. in the market be very predictable. And in Q4, we should really outperform what we're doing. Q3, really, we're like getting to that point where it's nearly balanced. Uh, September is probably not quite what September was a year ago, but we're finally starting to see just yeah. some stability and we're going to catch up from this. Year. I think this is really big as a whole is we're down 15% year to date mm -hmm. compared to last year. Let's just put that in perspective, right? That's only that 15% is a lot of soul and a lot of business, but it's not the amount that we sometimes feel and hear from talking to we're people out there. Right, well, this isn't 15% is a lot, but it's not. 50 percent we're not talking 30 percent we're not talking oh, the market is down 30 percent in active units from where we were like month over month with new stuff coming to market buyers are still active because we're not down 30 percent we're talking about like truly eating away at active units out there so yeah. this is a good sign and i think you know and some people look really at these really negative bad. numbers and they think oh you know this isn't a good situation but realistically 2020, 2021, the beginning of 2022, we basically borrowed sales from this year and next year, right? So when we're just a little bit slower, it's fine. And honestly, here at Land Title, our residential segment feels like 2014, right? We're not doing as many deals as we would have, you know, during 2017, 18, 19, but in all reality, like it's pretty normalized. Like this is pretty average for a decade. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's just the big thing is don't get too discouraged on the lack of de deals, there's still things happening. Well, and there's still it's harder to deals. It's yeah. just harder to get them. It's exactly. just harder to find them. There's just more competition amongst. But good news for all of these guys groups. is uh, there's a lot less loan officers and there's a lot less realtors out there doing business. So 15% drop in total sales. I'm pretty sure there's been at least a 50% drop in lenders and there's been probably more than a 15% drop in realtors. Yeah. yeah. The NMLS numbers of active people with lending licenses is significantly from this time last year. So yeah. well that's because refinances are a huge part yeah. of it. We get it. We we, we feel for you guys. Yeah, we know.
All right, so last slide for us to talk about. This is our percentage sold price to list price. And this one comes with a lot of caveats these days because what this is, is the price at which it goes under contract to the price at which it sells. So it doesn't take into account price decreases or concessions. So price, yeah, price decreases before going under contract. Correct. So let's just put this in. So, but we're still sitting at 99%. So that is a great sign. That is still, historically speaking, a seller's market. So let's keep that in mind. But this is still a really good sign overall that we're staying this high. We're not seeing the plummet. We're not seeing this precipitous drop. Now, this doesn't account for a lot of the credits out there. So we're probably closer to about a 98, I guess, with the credits. Yeah, near 98, 97%. But that is still a really good sign. It's a really good sign. And it's great for your buyers. You can use this and say, on average, people will put in 99% less of the asking price. Use that help and reminder to start putting offers in. And that's where the, an offer is just a negotiating spot. Hey, you're just saying, hey, let's negotiate. So get those folks to write offers in. Keep talking to your agents. Well, and this is going to stay fairly stable for most of the year. It tends to drop off quite a bit around the holidays. But other than that, I mean, you have a peak in the spring market and it's pretty stable the rest of the year here in Colorado. We're very fortunate. I mean, mm -hmm. there are markets out there. And honestly, you can look at the mountain markets as a good example where the peaks and valleys are much bigger than what we have here. So stability is key. And I think stability is the name of the game right now. Everything's coming back around to some more normalized seasonality, stability. People are acclimating to the interest rates environment we're in and they're getting more used to it. Now it's up to all of us to help get out some fairly decent real information and help them like get off the fence and go buy something. Yeah, you're gonna be keep your marketing going. Yep. Yeah, it's not the time to stop because it'll be too late if you stop and start up again in January. Great. All right, well thanks for joining us today. I'm Anthony at Land Title. Dr. Brock at Land Title. See you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. See you soon. Take care.